What's up, people? What's up, people? Afro Joe here. And uh, I know y'all know who this guy in this uh, picture is. Uh, Andy Griffin. He died Tuesday. It's kind of sad to find out that an icon like uh, Andy Griffin passing away on Tuesday. He was 86 years old and he died in his home in North Carolina, which ain't too far from it. It's just a state over from where I'm at. And, uh, it's kind of sad to see him go, man. Like, everybody's the, everybody that was on Mayberry, I think he was the last one. It's you know, him and Ron Howard's the last one on on, a, well, now take on the show. Down your fishing pole and meet me at and, the uh, fishing hole. We may not. And it's kind of sad to see him go. I'm going to put the, story, the link to the story about his life in the description box, but... Like he started off, like he went to four, five years of co uh, college for music, major in music, and he got his degree in 1949. He taught three years in Gold Goldboro, North Carolina, Goldsboro, North Carolina. After school was out, he worked outside drama laws Kearney, and he played, and he was in plays 1940. From 1949 to 1953, he appeared on the dinner club circuit as a comedian and a singer. And he was just doing, he was doing that. He was in drama. He, he did Andy Griffin for so long. And after he did Andy Griffin, he ended up, when he did the Andy Griffith show with Barney Fight with uh, Don Knotts and, the and uh, <clears throat> Ron Howard. It was a popular show, like, back in the day. My mother grew up on it. And I remember when I was a kid, they used to play the reruns at night, and I used to watch it. And it was kind of funny watching the old Mayberry <laughs> episodes. And then after Danny Griffith show went off, he came up with another show called uh, <clears throat> Matlock. Like, who didn't like Matlock and Andy Griffin? Like, who didn't, man? Like, I did, man. Like, you felt like, oh, man. But, um, he got inducted into the Hall of Fame down here in Tennessee at the old Grand Ole Opry House. And, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, I'll tell you this, man. When Andy Griffin, he was a producer, too. Nobody know, know that he was, he was a producer, too. So, when he was producing, uh, the Andy Griffith show, they did the pilot, and he called his fr and um, his friend not Don Nice that he knew for years. Looked at Andy, says Andy, you need a deputy, and that's how Don Nice got uh, got the part of uh, got the part of Barney Fife because he said, Andy, you need a deputy. And he gave him the bar the part of Barney Fife, and the show was a hit. He was a good, and it's funny, man, to see Andy Griffin. He was in a, 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 a country music video a few like a while ago, and uh, this is the this is the Andy Griffin show, the Andy Griffin show with the words. Nobody knows because you're probably hearing in the background, but you never. But it's sad to see him go, man. Like he brought, like who didn't stay up all night to watch the Andy Griffin show, like. Today is the 4th of July and everybody's watching. It's going to be like, they're going to have a marathon uh, for him on TV land for him because he deserved it because he, he had the two best hit shows. I think they're gonna have a, a marathon of his shows on uh, the fourth. I don't know, but uh, but he 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 was such a good actor. He was got all this talent, singing, telling jokes, great actors. Appeared in several movies before he did the Andy Griffith show in Matlock. <clears throat> you can't sit there and say he wasn't a good actor. Like nobody nobody didn't realize he was in Spy Heart with Leslie Nielsen. He played the colonel that had detachable arms. Everybody forgot about that. He was in Spy Heart with Leslie Nielsen. For real, watch the movie Spy Heart. And he's good in that movie. To see a man 
it's a goody goody play a bad guy he's good at it and I see why people like him because he's such a good ass actor when I see him in Spy Hard <coughs> Spy Hard I was like oh my god is that Andy Griffin and it freaked me out to see Andy Griffin in that movie because because Leslie Nielsen movies was but just funny as hell had a <coughs> like some of the movies he did had a when he did like the Naked Gun movies had sexual punts in it and jokes like that but when you see him in that movie it's like oh my god how did he go from Mayberry to telling Leslie Nielsen to fuck you or kiss his ass or some shit like that <coughs> that freaked me out like I said man if you go and watch Spy Hard you will see Andy Griffith in that movie playing the colonel but <coughs> like I said man he's a good actor though great legend man for coming up with the best show to ever hit TV besides uh, other shows that's so on out there like <clears throat> in back in them times because I get, to me when when I was younger and uh, when I got a little older and I started questioning it's like you never seen black folks on this show and I understood why because his shows was his show was came on back where there was segregation and that's why you never see black folks in his show and I say well I feel kind of bad because maybe he wanted black people on his show but he just didn't want to get in trouble and um I think he was a good actor man that's all I got to say about that man he came over two good shows been in several good movies uh, he lost his son though and I, and I feel kind of bad when I find that out he lost his son kind of sad to your son dies before you and you die later he died at 86 years old at his home you know, in North Carolina I was like man it's been, I was like man that's the, best, that's the worst that's the, I don't know how he died because they never said how did he die but they say he died peacefully and I said if he died peacefully man he's up in the sky man with Don Knotts probably sitting up there looking like Andy Griffin and and Barney Fife ready to go get Cletus uh, what, what, what's his name the, uh, Bass uh, Cletus T what, what Bass something like that will throw rocks in the, in the Andy Griffith show or go talk to Goober and <laughs> or Gomer Gomer and Goober not too long ago the guy that played Goober passed away not too long ago, the guy that played Goober on the Andy Griffith show passed away. And now Andy passed away. His real name is actually uh, Andrew. Isn't it? Uh, Andrew Samuel Griffith. Oh, man, I feel so bad for his family, man, to see him go down like it. 86. 86 years old. Tuesday. Like all them legends, I'm telling you, man, all these legends are dying off so quickly. Dying off so quickly. He was struck with Goober syndrome. He was stuck with a syndrome. But he had health problems. That was what it was. He had health problems that uh, got to him. And when you have health problems, it's going to take you down. But like I said, you you can't find a you can't find legends just like Andy Griffith no more like he is. They die off so early, man. I was in a friend's room and I asked her, I said, you heard about Andy Griffith dying? And she said, yeah, and this guy says, I said, who's Andy Griffith? I'm 27 years old and I know who the hell Andy Griffith is. Everybody know who Andy Griffith is. If you didn't, if you didn't sit there and watch reruns of Andy Griffith show there's something that's definitely wrong with you man uh, something's definitely wrong with you man cause I've seen episodes my son, I know my mother's seen it my grandparents seen it everybody watched this show but to see that I'm, I'm telling you man they don't make shows like his no more I'm not talking about uh, segregated shows I'm talking about good old fashioned shows like his Nowadays you get all these zombie shows, werewolf shows, and 
Like you can't find a show like he is. You can't you can't find a show that is old fashioned about a small town that doesn't have a lot of crime in it. Just a small little town with just country people minding their business and the sheriff is the judge and the sheriff. It only has one town drunk. You can never find a show like Annie Griffith it's no more. I'm telling you, man, when they play them reruns, I'm telling you, man, them reruns are... It's better to watch them than watch these damn bullshit shows you see today. Oh, what, what's, what, what's that bullshit show with the werewolves and shit? And, ooh, I'm going to watch the werewolves. Ooh, and, like, man, bump that shit. I'm going to watch me some Annie Griffin. Oh, that's all it is, man. You can't find good shows like Annie Griffith no more. Or Madlock. Or Madlock. I'm fair. I'm, I'm, I'm fair. There was a pair of my, like Matlock and Perry Mason was the kick ass lawyer shows, man. Perry Mason's and Matlock was the kick ass lawyer shows. You can't find that shit today, man. You can't. And, and, man, it's just bad, man. It's bad to see him go out like at 86 years old. They said we lose some legends, man. We lost, what oh, was back in the 90s, we lost uh, Richard Pryor. Then we lost who else? We lost Flip Wilson. See, all them legends are dying out. That means all them good shows that used to come on are, are gone. You're going to you gonna catch them on Nick and Knight or TV, man. But all them legends that, that made good TV are dying out like Andy Griffith. John Ritter, Don Knotts, Flip Wilson, Richard Pryor, all them, all them people. They made that, that, they had, them, I call them legends because the reason why, because they made, they, they busted their ass through racism and segregation and pre, uh, assassinations. You don't get that. They been through it all. And he died. And he died. And he passed away. I'm just glad he was around. To me, just like this thing. To me, I'm glad he was around to bring. To show he had talent. That he was just. just not just a country. Country boy. From North Carolina. But he had what he had. What he had. He would show, hey, I can tell jokes just like any other comedian and sing and play a guitar. He showed the word and produce and produce my own show. You can't find that many people like it. You can't find many people like it. I can produce my own show, play a guitar and sing and tell jokes. You couldn't find many comedians do that today. You couldn't find Eddie Griffin doing that. You couldn't find a uh, Chris Tucker or Mike Epps doing that. But this dude, he, he did it all. He showed the world what he can do. <laughs> but it, it ain't going to be the same. I wish they just redo it. I wish they bring back. I wish one day, I wish they just go to his wife and say, ma'am, how would you feel if we brought back your husband's show, but bring it up today, the Annie Griffiths, the Annie Griffith show. I keep leaving the TH off, the Griffith. I mean, you can't say Griffin because you sound like you're saying Peter Griffin. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going to say this, man. Andy Griffin, thank you for putting on the best two shows in the world, man. Because you really did bring good entertainment to the people. From black, white, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, to Chinese, to Japanese, to uh, Philippine, Filipino, Hawaii, Hawaiian to everybody because you got everybody watched this show they didn't care about it, uh, about what the color of his skin was they just people watched this show for good old fashioned TV and I'm glad he did it like I said man this has been Afro Joe telling like a T.I. is man y'all gotta show respect to Eddie Griffin because he did it all 
just to entertain the people. He thought about the people more than he thought about himself. And it tells you, man, that that's a motherfucking actor where he puts his fans before his before himself. So you really gotta show him fucking prompts on that. And that's all it is to it. But like I said, man, this has been Afro Joe Ten like a T I is. Follow me on Twitter at Afro Joe the work you subscribe to my youtube channel CeeLo Jr. 2 and CeeLo Jr. 3 and tell me what you think and like don't diss Andy Griffith because he's not here to defend himself like you don't want nobody talking about one of your dead relatives do you but show him some respect peace love and afro grease holla